This is part one of Clockwork by Philip Pullman. In the old days, when this story took place, time used to run by clockwork. Real clockwork, I mean, springs and cogwheels and gears and pendulums and so on. When you took it apart, you could see how it worked and how to put it together again. Nowadays, time runs by electricity and vibrating crystals of quartz and goodness knows what else. You can even buy a watch that's powered by a solar panel and sets itself several times a day by picking up a radio signal and never runs a second late. Clocks and watches like that might as well work by witchcraft for all the sense I can make of them. Real clockwork is quite mysterious enough. Take a spring, for instance, like the mainspring of an alarm clock. It's made of tempered steel with an edge that's sharp enough to draw blood. If you play about with it carelessly, it'll spring up and strike at you like a snake and put out your eye. Or take a weight, the kind of iron weight that drives the mighty clocks they have in church towers. If your head were under that weight, and if the weight fell, it would dash out your brains on the floor. With the help of a few gears and pins and little balance wheel oscillating to and fro, or a pendulum swinging from side to side, the strength of the spring and the power of the weight led harmless three through the clock to drive the hands. And once you've wound up a clock, there's something frightful in the way it keeps on going at its own relentless pace. Its hands move steadily round the dial as if they had a mind of their own. Tick tock, tick tock. Bit by bit they move and tick us steadily on towards the grave. Some stories are like that. Once you've wound them up, nothing will stop them. They move on forwards till they reach their destined end. And no matter how much the characters would like to change their fate, they can't. This is one of those stories. And now it's all wound up. We can begin.